Hello again, everyone. Zach Attack is here with my WWE No Mercy review for Sunday, October the 9th, 2016 from Sacramento, California. Well, this is the second SmackDown exclusive pay-per-view. And they had a lot to top. They had a little bit of pressure on themselves with Backlash being such a great pay-per-view. Some great things happening in three great matches. Well, tonight, No Mercy. The second pay-per-view from SmackDown only in this new era was decent. The background was better. But they did not erase the fact that No Mercy liked Backlash did some good matches. You had one match that was supposed to be the main event. And then another match which should have been the main event. And then they moved the original main event to the first match to come back to debate. In the new main event that replaced the old one. Now! When you should not main event a pay-per-view again for a while. The second pay-per-view Orton as main event did, which left us with a feeling. And it wasn't Randy's fault. His match against Lesnar ended SummerSlam on a shitty note. And Bray Wyatt and Orton was the new main event. And that ended his pay-per-view on a yeah note. Getting the anticlimactic finish. So with all that being said, he had two really good matches. Punched for the second straight SmackDown pay-per-view in a while. A match got cancelled within hours of the pay-per-view because someone got injured. But unlike Backlash, the replacement match did not suck. Like what happened with Randy Orton and Bray Wyatt was supposed to be a Backlash. Then Orton got injured. And then it was Wyatt getting the replacement match that sucked. But all that, uh, on this pay-per-view, about 6.5. I gave Backlash a 7.5. But I gave it a 6.5 because you had good matches, but it wasn't as consistent as Backlash. Like, the, like after the main event match was first, the energy got sucked out of the night because it was like weird to see the first match, which I think was a waste. When you really thought about it, nothing really came out of it to suffice the fact that it was first. You know, I think they just wasted the first, wasted the main event being first. That's what I feel. So again, 6.5 is my rating for this pay-per-view, but not talking about the ratings. Let's talk about the matches. First things first, we had a kickoff show with Kurt Hawkins not wrestling. God, this gimmick's going to get old quickly. You know, he's like Fon Dog refusing to get in, and kind of like Eve Marie was doing until she got suspended. You know, like refusing to go in and really had these situations, refusing to wrestle. And I bet you Kurt Hawkins is saying, he said he'll wrestle on Tuesday. But he's probably going to go in on Tuesday and saying, I'm going to wrestle next Tuesday. Keep delaying it to probably Survivor Series, but we'll see. But we had a, did have one match. I thought we'd have two pre-show matches, but we did have one. And at least SmackDown announced their pre-show matches before the match before the pay-per-view. Days before, not minutes during the pre-show like they did during Backlash. It was an eight-man tag involving American Alpha Team Up with the Hype Pros against... The job, I mean, the Ascension and Von Villains. Gotta feel bad for these two teams. They need to get pushed more, especially the Ascension. You know, feel bad for these two teams. Oh, two of my favorites in NXT, and they're getting destroyed on the main roster. But at least Megan Alpha's getting over. But I'll forgive the Reef for that. I'll give the Reef for burying the Ascension and Von Villains, but at least trying to push American Alpha. Because I'm a big Alpha guy, too. Um, they had nothing for these guys to do, because you had Usos going up for the tag titles later on. So I was like, okay, let's put these two teams together this time. These four teams and put them in a match. And it was a decent matchup to open up the show. Apple looked good. And it was a triple, quadruple team with all four men getting involved. But then Von uh, Villain took over the match before tagging in the Ascension. Isolating the heck out of Zack Ryder. And looking vicious. Trying to look as vicious as they can be on a eight-man tag. On a pre-show match. You know what I mean? They've done so much damage to, to the Ascension. It may be damage beyond repair. You know, like, they did some on SmackDown, like, they were eyeing people, but they didn't go anywhere. Like, anything they've done on the main roster has not gone nowhere. 
I like the new face paint, but they need some better booking. Like the club shirt. And they're trying to with them, too. On wall. And despite a sense of great isolation, not just isolating wider, but Gable as well, attacking Gable. Gable's knees holding up fine after getting injured by the Usos a few weeks ago. The tag, the hot tag to Jason Jordan. He carried like a house of fire. Some big moves, but the straps were down, delivering suplexes and clotheslines. Until all the guys came in with some big moves with Wider coming in with the Wolf Wider and Connor. And Gable came in with the 12th spotting, which led towards high altitude. On one of the members of the Vaughn Villains, 1 2 3 victory for the face team of American Alpha. And the hype bros. Uh, two points, two point eight. It was a decent opener, you know, for the pre-show match. I know it's kind of a another scrambled together match, last minute matchup, maybe within days at least. Not doing the pre-show like a backlash, but still, good action. I'm glad Alpha got the pin here, and maybe they'll go for the tag titles eventually. So there you go. Now on to our main pay-per-view. With the main event being first as I mentioned. Within hours of the pay-per-view, I was gigging. You know, I was DJing today at Westview Orchard. My orchard, I DJ for on 30 Mile and Van Dyke. And I was playing music and checking the internet. And I saw that there was rumors about this main event being switched to the first match. It ended up being true. It was like, wow. Wow, wow, wow. They were doing it to combat the fact that the, the second presidential debate was tonight. And they were scared because the last debate trounced Wall in the ratings. You know, Wall got destroyed by the debate. But this wasn't a Wall thing. This wasn't on USA Network. This was a WWE Network event. And they should have never moved the main event to the first match. I know they're trying to come back to the debate, but... When you look at the pay-per-view and see how it went, the main event being first was kind of a waste. You know, if something big, like I said earlier in the video, if something big came out of it, you know, it would have been forgiven. But all that aside, it was still a great matchup. The triple threat match between AJ Styles defending the WWE World Heavyweight Championship of the World. Against John Cena and Dean Ambrose. This was still a great match. We were hoping this match was going to be good. And it was good. Even if it was the first match. All three guys looked great. Cena and Ambrose wanted to get a piece of each other. Especially after the verbal slabbage they've been spewing at each other. Loved Ambrose's promo on SmackDown. And it's the freaking truth about John Cena. The truth. Coming from the Cena haters. And there's a lot of Cena haters tonight. In L.A. Area, you know, Sacramento, California, not wanting Cena to tie John Cena, not to tie Ric Flair tonight. There were some good spots, a five knuckle shuffle, double. He was at a good tower of dupe, attempting a triple suplex, and it was good action. They were born on the outside, and I was thinking to myself, they want to do something. I was trying to say, they need to do something big here. They didn't do anything big, but you know, I thought to myself, no Mercy 08 had two championship matches. That's like three WWE championship matches after Cena got injured. And uh, it was after No Mercy 07. You know, he was stripped of the title days before. Orton would get handed the title, meet Triple H in the match. Triple H would win that match, then defend the title against Umaga, then take on Randy Orton again, main event, which Orton would win. So I thought, okay, maybe we would have. Cena win, and then AJ cash in his rematch that same night. Or maybe we can see, like, a screwy ending, the only screwy ending they can do in a triple threat, have AJ and John Cena both double cement Dean Ambrose. Have Cena have the face lock for the STFU, and AJ have the calf killer. And Ambrose taps out to them both. And have, like, a rematch later on between Cena and AJ one-on-one. -on -one. Where they did do that double submission finish, the false finish, but it was Ambrose tapping out, uh, AJ tapping out to both Cena and Ambrose. And the match restarted, despite that false finish, like 
I thought like they were gonna have that finish and then like have a wee match between Cena and Ambrose and have AJ out because he tapped out. You know, because that would have been kind of made sense because Cena and Ambrose have been going at each other. But that never happened. And you have many one on one opportunities this match, too. Cena and Ambrose had a couple minutes alone, and so did Cena and AJ. But after that false finish, when we restarted the match, after AJ Styles tapped out to both Cena and Ambrose, Ambrose and Cena were brawling. We had Great sequence with the lunatic clothesline. And Ambrose going for dirty deeds. And then uh, they were born on the outside a little bit. And then Cena did the F U to Dean Ambrose. And then AJ came in. He was out for a little bit. Nailed Cena with a steel chair. After Cena did the F U, which was off the second wall, by the way, to Ambrose. With Ambrose still wheeling from that F U from Cena. One, two, three from AJ Styles. Still in the victory. Like the here he is. We stole the title by low blowing Ambrose with the referee not looking. But with the trip of fat rules being legal, AJ got to use a chair on Cena, preventing him from pinning Ambrose after the F U. AJ got the victory. 3.8 for this match. I gave it a couple points off just because of the fact it wasn't the main event. Like it should have been the main event. You know, it was supposed to be the main event. So there you go. Still a fun match. Great match between all three guys as you thought they were going to deliver. And AJ retains. I'm glad he did. Like, Cena will tie. It's sad. You know, I'm going to get a lot of hate. You know, but I think Cena does deserve to beat Ric Flair or at least tie him. I think he should just tie him. I don't think you should break it. I think you should at least tie Ric Flair for 16. But he should not beat AJ for it. I'm happy he didn't beat AJ tonight. It would have erased all the good work they've done with AJ. You know, for the last couple months, you know, him beating Cena at SummerSlam. And he beat Cena tonight. I said that Cena... I thought he pinned Ambrose, but he pinned Cena because he nailed Cena with the chair and then he pinned Cena. So, if I said he pinned Ambrose, AJ pinned Ambrose, I'm sorry, AJ pinned Cena. So, there you go. Glad you changed. Cena will tie, but for now, we have a phenomenal champion. Still a phenomenal champion. Now, on to our next matchup Carmella against Nikki Bella. Uh, we're going back to the Diva Bandit Break matches again. <laughs> This was a freaking bathroom break. We were making so much progress with the women's match, especially Charlotte and Charlotte and Sasha being the main event of all last week, which was awesome. You know, we were making progress with that, and then we have a bathroom break match, which was the right move for a match like Cena and AJ and Ambrose. But this was definitely an old school Divas match. You know, this was an era of the, the, the match was okay. You know, but it was like a match you would see five years ago. When it was the Divas era, not the women's era. Carmella's still green and still trying to get over as a heel without Enzo and Cass around. That's why they turned it here. And to be honest, I fell asleep during this match, to be honest with you. You know, I had a long weekend. I had to get up early the last couple of days for gigs and stuff. And I was knocked out, but I had enough energy for most of the matches. But I kind of fell asleep during this match. So I can't really wait in that, but I'm just giving it 2.5 because Bella got the victory. I did see that she got the Rack Attack 2.0. That's what she's calling the move now, her new finisher. The Rack Attack 2.0 because she can't use the old Rack Attack because we hurt her neck. That's the reason why she had neck surgery. So, but for what I did see from being awake, the match is just okay. It's like we're just going back to the old Divas matches. Carmella in the first big one-on-one -on -one match on a pay-per-view. It's you know, okay in the match, you know. She's improving a little bit, but working with Nikki Bella, it was just okay. And plus, like I said, I can't really judge it just because I only saw like a little bit of the match because I fell asleep over here. So, uh, there you go. Now on to our next matchup, which is for the WWE SmackDown World Tag Team Championships. Of the world, why now? And Heath Slater 
taking on the Usos, defending the titles, in a rematch from Backlash, when these two met in the finals of the tag team title team. I got a new Rhino t-shirt. I went to a local wrestling show, and Rhino wasn't there, but they still had Rhino t-shirts, because Rhino wrestles for XIZ, now being a local company in Detroit. Celebrated their anniversary this year and next year they're gonna be at Cobo Hall. That's freaking awesome for them. That's fucking awesome. They announced it last night. So the Uso, I love their new gimmick, man. Love them as heels and they really showed off tonight. I think it was a little better than the match at Backlash. I think it was better actually with Usos dominating early on. The new thuggish attitude, you know, they needed a change bad. They were being bland and generic and boring after a while. And teaming up with Reigns did not do them any favors either. You know, they were gone for too long. That didn't help. You know, with one of them being injured and being gone for too long. When they came back, it wasn't the same. And then, like I said, also, they teamed up with the, uh, Reigns a little bit. That didn't help either because everybody hates Reigns. So, like, they did them no favors. <laughs> And now the heels and the great new look, new theme. They got a new theme finally. You know, and it looked good early on. Isolating Keith Slater with the he's got kids chance. But Wino got in a little bit. Got some big moves in, some big splashes and suplexes. And then Wino got to tag into uh, Slater. Slater got isolated again. He even got super kicked and put in a submission hold. From uh, Usos until Wano got tagged in after breaking up uh the that submission hold and nailed the gore 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 on Jey Uso in one two three victory. We ended the tag team titles as Heath Slater and Wano the Magic Up and Wide for the Odd Couple of SmackDown continues. That's kind of funny, you know. The build up with Slater was actually interesting. SmackDown's doing a lot more interesting things, a little bit. You know, with the build-up with Slater, being a free agent, and the He's Got Kids thing, and the relationship with him and Wino. And I thought they would lose the titles tonight, because it would make sense for Usos to be champs and few American Alpha for those titles. That would probably happen eventually. But at least let Wino and Heath Slater wide this match a cup and ride. I'll give this match 2.7, just because it was a Decent matchup. Decent action here. So there you go. The Usos might be champions eventually. But we shall see. On with our next matchup. I thought it was be a pre show match, but it wasn't. Jack Swagger and Baron Corbin. Which might have been. I think it should have been pre show, but still. Uh, this stem from a match that happened on SmackDown with Baron Corbin kind of getting screwed over. It is match against Jack Swagger, who's now officially a SmackDown member after his wall contract ended. Uh, he had Barry Corbin in the Patriot lock, and Barry looked like he was tapping, but he was just grabbing for the rope, and the referee thought he was tapping. So he got screwed over with Lent towards his rematch. And Barry Corbin is focusing on a body part, and that was Jack Swagger's hand, so he won't be able to annihilate that Patriot lock. And for what it was, Beth was decent. You know, a little better SmackDown match. At least we had a conclusive finish, not a squeak finish like we did on SmackDown, as I just mentioned. The reason why this match was happening. So, we had Swagger's hand getting attacked by Corbin. It started when Corbin put his hand against the steel steps and stomped on it. That's how it started. But Spike battling with the hand. Swagger came flying back with some big moves, some clotheslines, a Swagger bomb. And... After numerous attempts at the Patriot Lock, which his hand was hurting, he didn't have enough power to at least attempt the Patriot Lock at the wall. But then Corbin came rolling back, looking like a heel, like, you know, he's a badass heel, up and applying his efforts and his improvement in the ring since the NXT days. Nailing Jack with the big moves like the Deep Six, and of course, the inevitable. End of days. After poking swag in the eye, after getting out of the Patriot Lock, 1 2 3 victory. For Baron Corbin. He's kind of he's kind of floundering. He was in a feud with Sin Call that never really ended. So now he's feuding with Swagger and he had a match with them. So hopefully Corbin gets back up the ladder here and the match I'll give this match about two point six. 
you know, nothing special, just these interaction from these two guys and Corbin trying to climb up the ladder and maybe going up for a title. And now, on to the match of the night. For the Intercontinental Championship, it was Queer versus Title. The Miz versus Dolph Ziggler. Now, we've seen these guys wrestle so many times. You know, they wrestled in various matches throughout the years, especially for the Intercontinental Championship. So by the time they were feuding again for that title and going towards backlash, we thought, okay, you know, they do a good an okay matchup. But I think being on SmackDown, it just made the rivalry feel fresh. You know, everything feels fresher and cleaner on SmackDown. And the match at Backlash was great. It was probably the match that kind of stole the show. And tonight, with the main event that was supposed to be the Triple Threat match, moving to the early part of the show, we were like, what's the main event going to be? And I think a lot of people, including myself, were thinking maybe Ziggler and Miz should be the main event. And seeing this match and how it went, and seeing the main event that did happen, made us we live at the point that this should have been the main event. It was great action, better than a backlash match. We didn't think it'd be better than a backlash match, but it was awesome. Great storytelling, great fashion. Ziggler fought with his has his life dependent on it, which it did, because his career was on the line. Miss attacking the leg at numerous points in the match. Especially going towards that figure four. And a little nuance to uh, Eddie Guerrero, whose birthday was today, what would have been his Fortnite birthday, with Miz taking off Ziggler's boot at the tank in the knee. And it was just back and forth action. Exciting moments. Ziggler, is, even at one point when he did lose his boot, he still delivered a super kick to Miz. And he had all these interesting things happening with Mernie's getting involved. The spray again. You had so many false finishes. You know, so many near falls. It was an exciting matchup. They got a lot of time in the zone that despite when he's getting the spray out again and spraying Ziggler, he's still kicked out. Even the Spirit Squad, who returned two forms of the original Spirit Squad. You had Mikey and Kenny. Kenny looked awesome, by the way. They've been on SmackDown during Miz's Dolph Umentary. That was funny. Seeing them around, they got involved again. And even them getting involved, it got super kicked for their troubles. And got thrown out by the referee. And after all the guilty parties got kicked out, despite all the odds against Ziggy, with the people interfering and Miz coming up with some big moves, after Miz's cronies got thrown out, Miz walked into a super kick, and one, two, Three! Dolph Ziggler wins! He wins the IC Championship. His career is safe. Now, there's a lot of speculation about his contract being up. And, you know, I had a, I, I love Ziggy. I thought he would lose because his contract was up. But I'm happy he won. I've been a Ziggy fan for so long. And he's been IC Championship. I think it's like his fifth or sixth time being champion. Should be world champion five times instead of IC champion five times, but still, hoping some start for some form. You know, he's been the storyline on SmackDown has been great. The build has been great with him. The losing streak, and now he won. It was a big pop from the fans who had been dead for the most part until this match. After the main event was the first match, so a great moment that should have ended the pay per view. You, it would have been a more better moment to see Ziggy winning and not getting fired. That would have been a great way. To, that's a that, that's a whiskey move SmackDown would have done. And that could have been awesome if they would have moved this match in the main event after the original main event got moved to the first match. So 4.4. Better than the backlash match. I'll, I'll give it even 4.5. Match of for sure. Great psychology. Great action. Great storytelling. Great emotion. Great passion. Just great action for these two great athletes. Who'd have thought that even though they battle a million times, they can still add something new to the rivalry and have great matches for two straight pay-per-views in a row. And tonight, after stealing the show last time and the main event being a little better, this time this match was a match of the night and should have been a main event. Now on to our next scenario. As I mentioned earlier, 
SmackDown had another last minute match replacement. Can't SmackDown have a last. Can't SmackDown have at least one pay per view without someone getting injured within hours of the pay per view, causing a big match to get cancelled? Causing backlash, you saw Andy Horn get injured and not getting cleared to wrestle just hours before his match against Bray Wyatt, causing a last minute replacement to happen, Randy Horn being written out by a storyline injury, and then having Bray Wyatt take on King, which was the only clunker of. Backlash. That's the only bad part of that pay per view is that last minute replacement match. Who'd have thought we would? Who'd have thought we would? What we would get from the match that did take place tonight after a month delay, making us wish the match was called off tonight too. Anywho, with the hours of the pay per view, or at least a day, we found out that Alexa Bliss's match against Becky Lynch would be called off because Becky Lynch is injured apparently. Due to an undisclosed injury that is nothing related to, like, not physically related to any wrestling related activity. It was like, damn it. We were looking forward to this match with Bliss's big showing, and I've been applauding Bliss. She's still great, but she's a great heel. Great fans with expressions. I like her new Holly Quinn inspired look, and she looked like she was gonna, I knew she would probably lose the match against uh, Becky Lynch, but she would have had a great showing. But then it was robbed from her. And the way they announced it was on the pre-show. Daniel Bryan and Jimmy Bain announced to Bliss that Becky Lynch would be out. And that the re that match will take place a month from now. Because they said Becky Lynch is out for a month. So they're giving her exactly a month to rest. She's not stripping the championship. But the rematch, the match will take place November 8th on SmackDown in Scotland. Too bad it could have been in Ireland. But Becky Lynch is from during the European track. So, with Becky Lynch out, Naomi would be replacing Becky in the match against Alexa Bliss. And after what happened the last time we had a last minute replacement match, we thought, man, it's better not suck. Because after Wyatt and Kane was replacing Wyatt and Orton, that match sucked. We didn't want this match to suck too, and it didn't. You know? Yeah, like they had a better backup plan than Kane and Wyatt. You know, at least now we was a better backup plan for the replacement for Becky Lynch. It was a decent matchup. You know, Bliss looked great against Naomi and had to prepare for a different woman, you know, taking off her game because of the fact that she had a new opponent to face last second. So despite Bliss looking good with a fresh expression and some big moves, now he recovers with nasty kicks. I like Naomi's new dancing gimmick. We'll see how long the gimmick lasts, but I've been plot I've been plotting Naomi for a while too. You know, she's very athletic and kind of been misused and looked good at one point, even doing the real view at one point. But then Chris rolled out of it. And even doing the X Factor Naomi did too, and then after Great exchanges with these women. Bliss is going for his big submission moves. Then got counted into a wall up by Miss Naomi. One, two, three, victory for Naomi. Wow, it's kind of cool to see Naomi win a match. A singles match, because she never wins much. Especially on pay per view. That's cool to see her win. But storyline wise, it kind of hurts Bliss. You know, momentum after, you know, the title match that was supposed to happen never. Took place, but I did like a tangent at the end. That was kind of funny. Uh, I'll get this one. Uh, 3.0. You know, for being a last minute replacement, it did okay. Better than the replacement we got at Backlash involving Kane and Wyatt. But then seeing what we did get tonight from these two, made us wish the match was cut off tonight, too. Our new main event. Bray Wyatt against Randy Orton. Match been waiting for for a month. We had a decent build-up with the mind games and weird things happening. and You know, the match was supposed to happen at Backlash. And we were like, okay, we're going to wait and we're going to get this matchup. No mercy. Well, like I said, I think this match should have been caught up too. The match was just, yeah, especially knowing what came before it and knowing what match should have been the main event. 
Ziggler and Miz should have been main event. This is the second pay per view in less than two months that Randy Orton was the main event, and guess what? He should not have been main event. SummerSlam! Finn Balor and Wallen should have been the main event. Not Randy Orton and Brock Lesnar. Same with tonight. Miz and Ziggler should have made a event in No Mercy. Not Wyatt and Orton. And it wasn't their fault. You know, it's just, they have no chemistry together. You know, the match was going to slow going, and that thing should have had no EQ stipulation. It's kind of like what happened with the Randy Orton Triple H feud. Great build up. Match sucked being one of the worst Mania main events of all time until Triple H and Reigns at this year's WrestleMania. So, you know, they brought it outside for a bit, even using the steel steps when Bray missed the set time. So then Old came back after that with the DDT and came alive trying to hear the voices in his head and trying to shake off the mind games that's been played on him by Bray Wyatt. But as we were going to do towards the end after the little bit of a bar, but it was just slow going. The crowd was dead a little bit. The crowd was dead doing Gliss and Naomi too. So, after kind of a slow going affair, even with Bray delivering a big move on the apron, the Orton it didn't help the match any matter. So, I had the little bar on the outside, and then, you know, the miss sets up from Bray on the steps. Orton looked alive and looked like. He was waiting for the all chaos after the Hangman DDT. And I was thinking to myself, well, we really love it. It's a little bit of things that someone could come out tonight to help Bray. Now, we've heard that Bray's former Wyatt family member, Luke Harper, returned recently after being out for about five or six months at a house show. So there's various, various rumors that he was going to debut and return tonight. And then there was a little bit of rumors about Sister Abigail. Being revealed at long last. You know, they've been teasing her. They even teased her on SmackDown recently. Even going as far as saying Sister Abigail would be Eva Marie. Wah, wah. Now, we, is it just me or is Dory Woody, Eva Marie, and uh, Emma? They've been gone for a little bit and they're trying to repackage her. But guess what? They didn't need repackaging. Seeing these Emma promos, I forgot to address this on the wall review. They had this new premiere thing for Emma. Saying that she's back as Emmalina. She was great as evil Emma. You don't need to fucking change her. And Eva Marie, I hate her with a passion for wrestling abilities. And calling her the Kim Kardashian of WWE. Well, she would, be, she would be more comparable to Kim Kardashian if she got robbed. Like Kim did. Maybe not at gunpoint, but still. That would have given a Kim Kardashian comparison. Bad joke. Bad joke, I admit it. Bad joke. I know, I know, I know. I, it just came out of my head, so. Make fun of me all you want, but now it's a bad joke. You know, troll me all you want. I ain't did it. So, they're trying to be back into Evil Week 2. That's why she dyed her hair. You know, that she might be Sister Abigail. But then the lights went out, as Owen was going for the RKL. And it was... Hopper returning! Attacking Owen, leading towards Owen walking into the Sister Abigail... And one, two, three, victory for Bray Wyatt. I'm happy Bray Wyatt won for once. You know, after being misused for so long. But the match itself, especially it being the new main event, it just left us with a ending. And it's the second SmackDown pay per view in the world to end 15 minutes early. Which is a good thing. You know, but not a good thing when the main event match is like, you know, replacing the main event with another one. It's like, it was kind of a waste when you really think about it. And knowing how the pay-per-view went, the main event should never have been moved. Or if it was moved, at least have Ziggler Miz be the main event, not Wyatt and Orton. You know what I mean? I'll give this match 2.4, because to me it was slow going. It was cool to see Bray won, but the match should have been more exciting. If they had a better stipulation to it, maybe, like a only gear or a street fight, it would have the match get it a little bit more exciting. But just a normal wrestling match, yeah, <laughs> need a little bit more action to it. So, uh, there you go. Uh, no mercy, decent pay-per-view, not as good as Backlash, some good matches still, especially Miz and Ziggler too. 
of the current series of matches. I do I think she's like the third or fourth match in this series of matches in the recent feud. You know, wrestling backlash, then wrestle on SmackDown, wrestle tonight. So there you go. But the ending, you know, with the last minute switch, that should never happen. You know, main event should have stayed the main event. Unless they decided to move Mrs. Ziggler main event instead of Wyatt Norton. So there you go. Once again, 6.5. We'll see how Wall does with Hell in a Cell. You know, we got Rusev and Reigns inside Hell in a Cell. They even announced doing SmackDown. It's pay per view tonight. The two matches have been added uh, Kevin Owens against Seth Rollins. We knew they would be added. And also Sasha Banks and Charlotte will be at Hell in a Cell. Uh, we don't know if there's going to be more than one Hell in a Cell. It should be. We don't want Rusev to be the only Hell in a Cell match with Reigns. Like, a lot of people want Wands and Owens in the Cell, including myself, but it would be badass to see Charlotte and Sasha. I'm hearing rumors they're going to put Sasha and Charlotte inside Hell in a Cell. I say they wouldn't have the balls to put them inside Hell in a Cell. And guess what? I may be wrong. They may put Saw and Sasha and Hell in a Cell. It would be awesome if they did. But we'll see which one of those two new batches added for the wallpaper view does get inside the cell. So, thank you very much for watching this review of No Mercy. With that in mind, y'all better act by the review from Zach. See ya! Yeah.